Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Chubby Cherub, brought to us by Bandai. Chubby Cherub is another one of the games Bandai brought over from Japan, changing its anime license into another type of character. Chubby Cherub is actually based off the anime Obaki no Kitaro, which actually originated back in the early 60s. In its original form, you actually would play as an Obaki named Kitaro. Now, an Obaki is kind of like a mythical form of a ghost that has the ability to transform. However, this particular Obaki doesn't have the ability to. He also has an extreme fear of dogs, which is why the main enemy in this game ends up being dogs. Once again, the only thing Bandai really changed when bringing this game over to North America was the main character sprite, changing him from the ghost, Kotaro, into a chubby cherub. So here we go with Chubby Cherub for the NES. Chubby Cherub, like the game Ninja Kid, is an ever-looping game, and your main goal is just to see how far you can get and how many points you can rack up. In the game, there's 12 different stages, which I'll be playing through before it actually ends up looping around back to the first stage again. As our main character of the Chubby Cherub, he has a few different abilities, one of which is the ability to eat food in order to gain flight power, allowing you to fly over pretty much most of the stage, as well as most of the enemies. The Cherub can also pick up some items to use them as projectile weaponry. To pick up more projectiles, you actually have to eat the lollipops. The hearts that you shoot out are the only thing you can actually hurt the dogs with. In the original, you would actually use the power to bark at dogs, and by doing so, you would bark at the dog before it barked back at you, scaring the dog off. However, in this version of the game, we shoot hearts at the dogs and have to avoid the letter B that comes out of their mouth, representing the bark. Midway through each of the stages, you'll come to a stop sign, in which case you must fly around and collect all the items on screen before the screen will allow you to keep scrolling and get to the next part of the level. All the food that you eat in the game, besides also giving you power, will give you different amounts of points depending upon the food. At the end of each level, you'll come to a large building usually with lots of windows, and when you get all the way over, lots of different food items will appear. You have to go around and eat the food items until eventually you finally find the friend that you're trying to save behind one of the windows. Once you find the friend, you complete the level and move on to the next stage. Also, at the screen for each stage, you can see your friend that you'll be saving at the upper right corner. Throughout the game, there's lots of different dogs that we have to really watch out for. The main thing to really avoid them is easily by flying up to the top of the screen and stay up there avoiding all their barking. However, sometimes you won't have the fly ability or you'll be running low, so you'll have to conserve some of it. In which case, then you'll have to drop down a little bit closer. Also, when you come to an area like this, where you come to the stop sign, and there happens to be one of the bigger dogs that just will not stop barking, it's best to have one of the projectiles weapons so you can take him out. We may run into a problem later on with those stop areas, and sometimes they can get really annoying because the items that you need to spawn so you can grab them to continue moving sometimes won't appear for you, which can get really annoying and sometimes cause you to actually either kill yourself or one of the enemies or reset the game. Just like at the end of stage 1, we have to stop in front of a building at the end of the level and collect enough food from the windows in order to locate the friend of ours that we're trying to save. Sometimes you'll have to deal with dogs, and some of the windows will actually have dogs hidden in them that you'll have to avoid, and also you'll have some other enemies, including birds, that you may have to contend with sometimes. There really, of course, is no strategy, since the friend is behind a random window each and every time you get to the end of a stage, so it's really just luck in order to find it. Just try to do your best that when you grab a vegetable, you're not standing right in front of the window, so that when the dog appears, it immediately hits you. Chubby Cherub is one of those games where you only have one hit before you end up losing a life, and that's really what makes it challenging. You can really tell your life count by underneath your score you have a certain amount of hearts, and every 10,000 points that you get, you get an extra heart, which means you have an extra life. This also happens to be one of those games that doesn't have a lot of enemies to deal with, so once you've completed the first few levels, you've pretty much seen all the hazards that you'll have to deal with. 
except for the bosses, which we will see at the end of this stage. During this segment, just try to do your best to avoid the red dog or launch a projectile at him if you have one, collect the items, and if any of the P symbols appear so you can get invulnerability, grab it so you can just fly around easily without the bird or the dog hitting you. At the end of the stage is our first boss battle. When the boss gets halfway through the screen, a bone will appear. Immediately pick up the bone and launch it at the enemy, in which case you'll instantly defeat him and complete the stage. You can only hurt him with that bone, so be sure to be floating right around where it's gonna up appear each time. You can grab it, launch it at him, and you won't get hit by the enemy himself. Every three levels will have to deal with a boss battle like that one, though they do change up the enemy, as well as the type of area you'll have to battle him in. This stage is a little bit tricky, because you have all the trees that you have to fly under. You can't fly through the large amount of leaves on top of these trees, so you have really a set path that you'll have to go to, in which case a lot of it's going to be spent on the ground. Thankfully, though, they make it extremely easy by having pretty much all the enemies you have to deal with come out from the top of the screen and fly over that way. Just watch out for the droppings from the birds so you don't get hit, and you may have to dodge one or two of the birds on the bottom part of the screen during the forest. Even though the graphics are pretty plain in this game, I love that sprite of the animal that kind of looks like a bear. I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to be a bear or a dog. Anyway, that little circular animal ends up being rather cute. At the end of the stage, once again are grabbing the food items, and after we find the correct food in this item, we end up finding a racial stereotype behind one of the windows, but it's what we were looking for, and we complete stage number four. After the racial tension has ended, we move on to stage number 5. Level 5 once again has a pretty much open sky area for you to travel through, so the birds really won't be too much of a problem as they're going to really stay on the upper portion of the screen. When you come to the smokestacks, you have to be very careful and just fly underneath of them. If you're actually able to fly up and hit the bottom of the halo-looking smokestack that goes up, you can actually go to a bonus round where you can collect a lot of extra points if you really would like to. One benefit to the bonus stage if you want to go there is that you can actually regain all of your flight power instantly. Watch out here for a few of those cute jumping bear sprites. Another thing in the game, though, that's kind of weird is even after you defeat certain enemies like the dogs, which are the only ones you can hit with your projectiles, as they're falling off screen, they can actually still hurt you, so you have to be very careful with that. Once we find the right food, we complete stage 5 and we can move on to stage number 6. And remember, stage 6 will have another boss battle at the end of it. Level 6 starts to get a little bit crowded as you have smokestacks and lots of bird enemies, as well as you have these electrical poles that you're not going to be able to actually fly through, you have to fly over. After the first bit of the level is pretty congested, it then opens up a little bit thankfully, so you can get to a more sky-filled part of the stage and hang around the top part of the screen dodging most of the enemies. There seems to be a lot of birds, especially during this part of the stage, so just try to do your best to avoid their droppings as you can fly overhead. Here we have some more of those smokestacks. Remember, if you want a bonus game, you can wait for the smokestacks to spit out a halo, and then you have to run at it from the bottom portion of it in order to access the bonus game, which will really just grant you some points. Now it's time for the boss of the stage, which once again is extremely easy. He runs towards the middle of the screen, a bone appears just to the right of him, grab it quickly, throw it at him, and the level is complete.
we've reached the halfway point here of Chubby Cherub, and, uh, unfortunately, you've pretty much seen all the game really is going to be offering us for the most part. For the most part of stage number 7, we're pretty much going to stay towards the skies, staying really on the top portion of the screen, flying down when we need to, in order to grab some food to replenish our flying meter. At the stop sign, we have one of those bulldog enemies, which can launch a lot of the barks at you really quickly, so just try to fly down, and if you have a projectile, use it on them to make this portion of the stage a little bit easier. Just try to stay towards the top portion of the screen and do your best to avoid the smokestacks as they fly upwards. There will be a bird or two trying to get in your path, so just stop right before the bird ends up hitting the top of the screen, and you should be able to avoid running into it. At the end, grab the food in front of the windows, and hopefully, very quickly, you'll find your friend. Stage 8 starts off with a pretty good overcrowding of dogs barking at you really quickly, as well as the smoke steps. Your best bet is hopefully you have a few projectiles, and if not, hopefully you can find one of those pea blocks laying around so you can grab it to get in vulnerability for a little bit of time to fly up towards the top of the screen and stay up there for most of the level. Thankfully, the stop portion of this stage is really easy to get through because you only have one of those bear enemies and it moves rather slowly along the bottom platform, can't throw projectiles, and it can't jump at you. Another thing about the game is that they actually have some bonus points you can gain. Like, for example, Part 8, you gained a bonus for how many dogs you were able to defeat. And you also have that same bonus for 9, but it could also be about smokestacks, as well as food items that you gather throughout the stage. It's set per level, so every level may be a little bit different, but it's always the same each time you play. This is another one of those levels where staying near the top of the screen will pretty much net you an easy pass through the level, just having to stop and move a little bit when you need some food, as well as to dodge some of the birds. Near the end of the level, you'll come to another one of those areas where you have a maze filled with the trees. Try to do your best at the beginning to dodge the dogs that are barking at you, and then fly through when you have an opening or after you take out some of the dogs. Thankfully here you can fly diagonally upward to avoid the dog, just be sure to dodge a few of the birds before you get to the smokestacks where it's time for the next boss battle. Once again, the boss is just as easy as every time before. Yes, he has a ton of weaponry that he throws out in bomb form, but just get near the bottom of the screen, grab the bone, and throw it at him, and the battle will be over. We're now down to the final three levels of the game. At the beginning of the stage, if you want to, you can conserve some of your power by just walking across the electrical lines and on top of the buildings. When you get over to the right side, take out the dog and then just walk across the pipes in the ground. There won't be too many enemies in your way this way, and you can pretty much have an easy path as you walk your way through.
When you get to the stop sign, it can be rather tricky sometimes to actually get the item to appear. I was able to get it to appear here by walking just slightly to the left after the screen had stopped scrolling. I actually had to restart my run a few times at this point because for some reason I just couldn't get the item to appear, or I had actually run out of my power meter so I couldn't fly up and grab the items in the sky. I always seem to lose a lot of my flight power during this stage, and there doesn't seem to be as much food available as in other stages, so it can be a little bit challenging at times to keep Chubby Cherub afloat during this level. Thankfully though, at the end of the stage, if you end up missing and not finding the right food right away, all the extra food that you collect, even though it will open up some enemies sometimes, will allow us to regain a lot of our power meter. With stage 10 complete, we now have only two more levels to go. Stage 11 is pretty much more of the same. I like to stay towards the ground of this level and slowly walk my way across. It will take longer than maybe flying overhead, but there's not a whole lot of enemies on ground level during this part of the stage. Watch out when you get to the halfway point because there's a dog, a few birds, as well as some smokestacks that you have to avoid while collecting the objects. Once again, I had to walk all the way over to the left side in order to actually get the object to appear. I'm not sure exactly why I always have to backtrack to the left side of the screen to get the object to appear in these stages, but stages 10 and 11 especially don't seem to like me very much, and I sometimes have to do some weird things in order to complete them. During this wide open part of the stage, just stay at the top of the screen and you should be able to fly over all the enemies that may try to get in your way. Once we find the right food at the end, we complete stage number 11, and it's time to move on to the final level of the game. Even though this is the final stage of the game, it really isn't any more troubling than the past few levels that we've been completing. A little bit into the level, you get to one of those mazes again with all the trees. Just work your way through slowly, finding the openings in the trees and avoiding the birds that fly down at you. As long as you're able to make it through rather quickly, none of the birds should even be a factor while walking through. Once again, just like the last few levels, I'm going to have to walk back to the left side of the screen and jump all over in order to finally get the object to appear so I can grab it in order to actually continue on in the level. Try to do your best here to avoid the bear-like enemy that keeps walking and jumping along the path. When he gets to the top portion, he can't jump back down, so the bottom objects won't be too hard to grab. If you're low on your flying power, just stay towards the bottom portion of the screen, watching out for any bird that may get in your way by jumping over them and launching projectiles at some of the dogs. This bulldog can be a real pain right here, so try to jump up to the top portion of the screen and you should be able to jump over him and avoid getting hit by his bow wow.
When you get to the construction area, it's time for one last showdown with the boss. Grab the bone object, launch it at him, and you've completed the stage. Once you've done so, you've completed all 12 levels of the game, and now the game will actually just begin to loop over and over again. And with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.